Hello folks and welcome. Talking about uh, advanced Linux kernel today. Filming in 1920 by 1080. You can adjust your um, YouTube player accordingly by that gear symbol if need be. All my videos also have timelines and chapters. And uh, if you are going to do this, I do encourage that you watch the video in its entirety. I'm going to be talking about replacing your Linux kernel with a more advanced Linux kernel. Case in point, I have a brand new Windows 11 laptop that everything worked on it. I now wanted to do boot it with Linux Mint 21.2 Cinnamon. Went to Linux Mint's website, downloaded a fresh copy of the Cinnamon desktop, burned it onto a USB stick, brought up the computer, and my touchpad didn't work. It was working in Windows 11. That's normally a showstopper for most folks, not me. I went ahead and grabbed a hold of a USB-based computer mouse and finished the install. Then I upgraded, upgraded the Linux kernel to a 6.2, and you can do this also, and then reboot it and the touchpad came back to life. I disconnected the USB-based mouse and everything worked fine. So now I have a dual boot Windows 11 Linux Mint. Uh, you may have to do this also if you're trying to install this with a brand new computer and or just newer components. So case in point. Anyways, folks, um, I am going to uh, show this complete process and I want to take it from an angle where you've never done this. So basically, I'm not sure what the target audience is, but I'll take it slow. Alt and F4 to close the welcome screen. And uh, before I show you my components on this machine, because this is not the same laptop. This is a tower computer. I normally don't film from this one. However, I have le lots of different computers, but this one here has a lot of hardware that is new and also plenty of it. In other words, when you see my systems properties, please don't read into you need all this horsepower to run Mint. You don't. You can look that information up on the line or you can also get it with the Linux Mint website. Right click. I do other stuff with these machines, this machine specifically. So yes, it's got five terabytes worth of drive, 64 megs of RAM, and a 12 core processor. All right. Again, you can go to Mint's website to see what the bare minimum. But focus in on the kernel. So I'm running a 6.2 series kernel. So the current version on Linux Mint's website right now is a 5.15 series kernel when you do the install. And again, it's in my case, I was trying to do this with a Windows 11 and it didn't find the touchpad. But I upgraded it to 6.2 and the touchpad worked just fine afterwards. So hence, you have to do that sometimes. Newer kernel, newer stuff, newer components. All right, Alt and F4. So where is the Linux kernel found? Well, the easiest way to do this is to go hit the shield, open that up and go to view. One more time with the Linux kernel spiel. If everything works on your system currently, probably isn't uh, any reason to upgrade your Linux kernel unless you want to live on the edge, quote unquote. Okay, but more importantly, I'm going to click that. Do you have a smartphone? Maybe you want to take a picture of this on your computer. You can also do screenshots, SC. I like the uh, actual window. You can leave the tool right on top of it. It never takes a picture of itself. And then um, I'll save mine to the desktop just to let you see the size of the file. It's uh, 55 kilobytes. This should fit on any, any thumb drive. All right, whenever you upgrade your Linux kernel in Mint, you, it will not erase the previous one. So you should be able to boot into your previous kernel at any time during the reboot process and click Advanced Options. That's the reason I'm having you make a copy of this thing or a screenshot or a digital copy. I'm sorry, a, a photo of this. So um, if you are dual booting, like um, let's say Mint and Windows, you should have a screen that says which one do you want to boot into. And then under the Linux Mint version, you'll see advanced options and you click that and you can boot into the previous kernel. Okay. So let's talk about kernels. Again, I'm approaching this from the angle of I'm not sure your skill level. So we'll talk about uh, just everything basic. 5.15 is the lowest kernel. 6.2 is the highest kernel. Newer goodies, in other words. So the 5.15, you'll see that it's installed, but that does not mean it's running. 
I'm running a 6.2. Right click on the panel bar, system settings, system info. That number there is the same as that number because that's what I'm running. Not installed because I do have another Linux kernel installed and you should also. You should always have two kernels installed. Mine, mine is a 515 series and a 6.2. It doesn't say installed, but it is installed because it's active. And you have an active kernel, it has to be installed. I can't remove an active kernel either. You see the red box that just popped up? This kernel cannot be removed because it's currently in use. All right, with that said, I'll close all that stuff down. So you're trying to install a new computer or you just installed a new computer and you find that something is not working. First of all, if you're trying to install this and uh, the touchpad doesn't work, then of course try a USB based mouse. But try to finish the install nonetheless. Providing your network card works, you should be able to go here and view and Linux kernels and continue. And then walk over and take a look at your 6.2 category. You should see this in here. Yours probably will just say superseded in here, something to that effect. So I'm going to have to pick on the next one just to show you the install command because I can't show that to you on an active kernel. So you will have an install button and you click that and provided you're online, it downloads the files and updates and upgrades your kernel. And it also updates your boot files, your grand unified bootloader files. So after it gets done installing, you probably have a check mark. And you think you're running on the latest kernel. You're not. You have to reboot the machine. It doesn't matter if it doesn't say that or not. So go over here, restart the computer. Allow the computer to fully boot. Right click on your panel bar, system settings, and verify under system info that you are currently running the kernel you just installed. In my case, 6.2.0-32. Today's date is the 11th of September. 2023. This number will be different months from now or a week from now. But in either case, um, verify that you're on the latest version of the Linux kernel and then do yourself one more favor. Right click on that icon, the updater icon, right click on it and hit refresh. If you want to open it, that's fine also and do a refresh just to make sure there's no updates. If you see another Linux kernel, then upgrade it, Up, update it, update it. Updated, upgraded, same thing, almost. All right, let's say you uh, have a scenario where you don't want this new kernel. You want to revert back. Well, do a reboot, boot in your 515 series kernel, open this back up, and when you get to the 6.2, the one you just installed, and you, the one you want to remove, then hit remove. You can't remove a kernel that's running. So if you have the 515 series, that'll say active on it, and so will this number. Then you can click that and look at the installed kernel and remove it. Hopefully that made sense. So the moral of the story is this. If you are trying to install this on a new system, follow that procedure. Just use the current version and uh, hopefully everything else will work like network cards. But if the touchpad doesn't, plug in a USB one and then upgrade the kernel. Upgrade the kernel. So it's running on the latest one that Linux Mint has to offer you. Now let me quickly take you over to here to Mint's website. All right, so on Linux Mint's website, you may not have clicked on the links area, but here's the blog, okay? The blog is uh, where you get some information by Clem and uh, he is uh, indicating here that uh, they're planning on LMDE 6, Linux Mint Debian Edition version 6, and also the Mint 21.2 Edge version. The Edge version will have this more modern Linux kernel right out of the gate. In other words, when you download the actual Edge version, it'll have the newer Linux kernel on it. So you can do those installs a little bit more efficiently in my book for newer computers. As I just pointed out, case in point, uh, I was uh, doing, uh, yeah, I think that's sufficient. Uh, I was doing that on a brand new Windows 11 laptop. And again, I had to upgrade the kernel to get that touchpad to work. Stuff like that. Anyways, folks, thank you for watching.